Hello and welcome to Journeys and Journals. This time we're traveling by covered wagon, maybe uh, horseback. Well, let's meet my guest. And you are? Diana Hale. I'm the organizing regent for the Applegate Trail new DAR chapter in Grants Pass. So that's the Applegate Trail tie-in to our next guest. Lita Niederheiser, I am an Applegate and an, uh, a historian concerning the Applegate Trail. And you get the finder fee for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more zeros. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Cheryl Martinsund, and I am uh, have just become a member of DAR, which is Daughters of the American Revolution. And so I brought my two friends from our organizing group here to visit with us today. Well, can you help me? Mm -hmm. Find my roots. <laughs> we can help you. Uh, whether you want to, would want to come into the DAR, we have long forms and short forms, but I don't know whether you're aware of what the DAR is. No, let's start right there. Okay, the DAR is, as Cheryl said, the Daughters of the American Revolution. Right. To qualify for uh, approval, uh, you either have an ancestor that fought in the American Revolution or you lent aid to the American Revolution. They could have, by lending aid, they could have given supplies, they could have given food, they could have shared the home. Um, John Jay for uh, signing the declaration. Uh, if you're a descendant of him, you can qualify because of that. And for those that don't know when the American Revolution started, it was 1775. So it predates all of our flag waving 1776 <laughs> that we're so proud of. Yes. If it hadn't been for the revolution, we wouldn't be here. I we'd don't be saying, well, we'd probably be, be Briti under Brit or British. Singing, like, God mm -hmm. save the Queen. <laughs> Uh, I like America beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like this country. And how do you get tied into this organization? Well, my ancestor is Eliphalet Huntington, who was the brother of Samuel Huntington, who signed the Declaration of Independence. But uh, Eliphalet Huntington uh, not only provided blankets for the soldiers, but then he also fought with McClellan's regiment, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, how do so. you know so much about this guy? This is a long <laughs> time. Research. <laughs> research. <laughs> this was a long, long time mm -hmm. ago. Uh -huh. And then I qualify because Jesse Applegate, the Oregon famous Applegate's father, was Daniel Applegate, and he uh, ran off to join the Revolutionary War because his father and older brother were already there at the age of 11. <gasps> they didn't actually, he did some, a little bit for them, but it wasn't actually inducted officially till he was 14. But, and then he was the drummer and the flag bearer for George Washington. Now, how did you know that? Well, I'd heard some of that, and again, it's like she says, you do a lot of research. <laughs> so what's We have a database. We have a database, oh. and most of the names are in that database, uh, at least of the ones that have come into DAR. We do have new ones uh, coming in that we don't have it in the da database, meaning no one has come in on that particular line. But uh, we have books that we can look at. Every state, most often, they'll have archives and they have a record of that. Some people, it's harder to find it than others. Some states or colonies kept better records than others. Right, and some had fires in their courthouses. Yes. We know about <laughs> the census one year was totally destroyed by fire 18, oh dear, 1880 something, there's no, and one, you know, mm -hmm. the, the records were gone. Well, 1890, all we have are the servicemen records. We don't have the records for uh, cities and towns, Who lived per in se. what house right. and how many right. there were in that house. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you can find out so much about your family just by looking in these records of, um, you know, they, sometimes they won't even list the name, they'll just say daughter two years old or... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the census records definitely, a lot of it is listed that way. Uh, kind of a funny story about Jesse Applegate, when the census were taken 
here in Oregon in 1860, they listed him on the form as a farmer, and he reached over and took it and crossed it out and wrote horticulturist. Because oh. <laughs> he was growing a lot of stuff for the uh, government and testing what seeds and things would grow out here. But he, did, he, want, he wasn't just a lowly farmer. Oh, great. Now, where was this? Up at Yonkala in Douglas County. Now, that's your family home? That's where the Applegates took their donation land claim, uh, was in the Yonkala area. Uh, and that, I grew up on part of the old donation land claim. And that area is now part of Better Life TV. We are expanding north, and soon we'll be in Portland. Oh, well, Clear over on the coast, Klamath Falls into California. <laughs> so it'll be Washington, Oregon, California. Uh, your family, tell me about this man who was in the war. It had well, to be a man, because women. But you could come on a woman if she lent aid, because sometimes her husband had been killed. The initial one that I came in on was a minister. He was a Baptist minister. Um, he was a um, pony rider, he had a circuit rider. He had five churches and he was in South Carolina and served in South Carolina. And uh, his name was Reverend Philip Mulkey. Now he had a string of three generations of Baptist ministers. And to me, I find that totally captivating because I was raised Baptist. Oh! And so it connects me, my heart, my faith. Um, so now the Mulkeys. The Mulkeys. Excuse me. It's all right. But how do you spell that? M-U-L-K-E-Y. And he didn't come in because he was objecting to the British. He came in because the Indians were at that time on the side of the British. And they were fighting and they were hurting his congregation. And he didn't really believe in fighting, but to protect and hold his congregation together, he fought against the Indians and if anyone remembers history, several years afterwards, he switched over, the Indians switched over, and they fought with us part way through. Some of the Indians did. Yes. But my family, who were Canadians, it turns mm -hmm. out that they had the hunting grounds in, across the river in the US, and they were on the losing side in that war. And they mm -hmm. said, you don't have hunting grounds anymore. You're back permanently on the Canadian side. So that's how my roots stick over there. Do you know, this is an incredible piece of artwork. What did you do? Well, the Applegate, I've always loved history. And um, I took the Applegate Trail, an online class at Fresno University. And I went to all of, many of the different Applegate um, kiosks along Oregon. And I was enthralled in the history. They have them in, like this one here, they have them built within. They tell about accommodations. You can go up to Wolf Creek. You can go to Rogue Valley uh, State Park. And there's a large kiosk there. But they tell about all of this. And I did not know until reading it that I think many people know um, the Cherokee Indians and the Trail of Tears. We had our own Trail of Tears here in Oregon. And so I learned that in the process of this. And you probably already knew that. Yes, that, that, that didn't come until um, about 1852 mm -hmm. uh, when the Indians in Oregon signed a treaty and they uh, took them all up to Grand Ronde, which is up in the northern part, close to Portland. Uh, but they marched them up there, much as the other group in the trailer winter too. in the winter time. Um, the Rogue Indians, um, all the Indians from around here. Now the Klamath and the Modoc were not a part of that, but all of the Indians around here were marched north. And the march was a trail of tears. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, it was winter time and... Um, many died. Many died, it was not... Inadequate a, food, inadequate cover. Yeah, all of those things. But if you think about it, um, many of our settlers, when they were coming through on the covered wagon, many of those died. You know, they had to have their their clothes in their shoes for a very long time, and so they would wear out. Sometimes they weren't prepared 
to come when they cross a desert. They, they well, might the, see. The statistics basically indicate that about 17 people per mile over the span of the Western Oregon Trail, Applegate Trail uh, died. Uh, the first couple of years they had far less deaths than they did later because as time went on uh, the water sources were polluted and, and so then you begin to get typhoid and those kind of things were the first groups and then the Indians became uh, the first ones they didn't bother very much but as time went on they began to go oh these guys are coming and coming and coming and we're losing we're it. losing out they're killing off the buffalo etc often you know they did bring sickness measles things of that nature mm -hmm. um, you know when Marcus Whitman was killed in the Cuyahoga war up at, at the Whitman mission that was because measles had been brought and many of the of course the Indians had no resistance to that and many of them died and and then there was some little bit of agitation from some Eastern Indians that came into the Whitman mission and that's why that massacre occurred. And, and, and there's a lot of heartbreak there because people who came with the Bible to, do, to bring freedom ended up giving their lives. Absolutely. Um, and with the Applegates, when their train came in 1843, not the Applegate Trail, but the Oregon Trail, um, they had very few deaths till they got clear here. And then the yeah. Applegates, you had to st stop at Fort Walla Walla and, you know, it's kind of Washington there, and come down the Columbia River on rafts. And uh, yeah, one of the Applegate rif rafts upended and both Lindsay and Jesse lost a son, as well as an, an old, family friend that's referred to as an uncle, but he really wasn't their uncle. Um, and they vowed at that point in time that when they had settled their families, they would help look for another way into Oregon. And that's part of what brought about the Applegate Trail. Because the river is, I mean, even it's now endless. with the dams and the, it's, it's big. It's scary. Well, and then of course all those falls with the dowels and all of that, those, of course, now they're dammed up some, but then they were treacherous. Absolutely. Well, you're recommending that this, this kind of thing can be made by any one of us. Yes, it's just simply a collage. I just took different glimpses of the Applegate and glued it and, and pieced it together. When did you get interested in the Applegates? I know I don't need to ask you that question. <laughs> in the Applegates or in DAR? Well, let's talk about the Applegates because you are one. Yes, that's correct. And all of a sudden this whole, I mean, the interest in the Applegate Museum and the Applegate family, even clear up to Yonkala, you said? Mm -hmm. uh, that was the original home? Uh, well, they actually originally uh, settled up at uh, Rickreal, which is just above Salem. Uh, in f when they came in '43, that's where they that's where the Lee Mission was originally, and uh, they settled in the abandoned Lee Mission, and then took up land claims there. Uh, were there from '43 to '49. Uh, after they laid out the Applegate Trail and came through the Yonkala Valley. Uh, Jesse just fell in love with it. Of course, their civilization was north from that. There was no white people that far south. And uh, after they laid out the Applegate Trail and there was some real uh, oh God, tension, I'm not quite sure what the right word is, but a lot of people were unhappy with some of the things that happened on the Applegate Trail. Gave Jesse in particular a lot of grief. And so he decided to move his family down to the Yonkala area. and both his brother Lindsay and Charles and Levi Scott, they all came down to the uh, uh, Young Kale area. Can't you just imagine troublemakers in every ilk? They're everywhere. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you said 1843, isn't that the date that you said this croc here? Yes. Is that the, cover, uh, that, the wagon that, that it croc, came on? Uh, when they started west in 1843, uh, Jesse's wife, Cynthia, uh, Jesse really was partial to peach pie. So she packed peaches in this. I did have a lid on it that's long since been broke and brought them with the idea that she would bake a pie on the trail for his birthday. And so she did. And the, uh, my Uncle Kelly had the jug for years and years and uh, actually for a time it set out in the chicken house. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, 
That's Thank you for bringing a genuine relic out of the... And you have to wonder how they, I mean, it is just crockery. You have to wonder how it got here even, you know, without, because they did lose so much along the way, but oh. Cynthia managed to bring it all the way. So but what kind this, of a lid would this have had? It had a, a, a kind of fit down in there, almost like a seal. Mm -hmm. um, and was it crockery also? Yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this kind of predates canning. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that I don't know exactly, I think several people have suggested to me that perhaps they were um, preserved in brandy, but I don't know that. Well, and knowing Jesse, I almost, as he was really against heart liquor of him, mm -hmm. that mm. I don't know for certain. But maybe to save his peaches. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> what is this you've brought for us? Every year uh, the DAR has different contests, and this was American Heritage, and I, like Lita, I like to write. Um, I've not mm. written books, but I like to write poems or short stories. And You all three have that in common. Your book is quite outstanding about... Thank you. Rogue about Rogue, Rogue River, mm -hmm. Images of America, Rogue River. In fact, when I first met Lita and she found out that I just had a book published. I want to know <laughs> where. <laughs> so then when I saw her the other night, she said, I just signed a contract. Oh, so. Lita, this is wonderful news. Mm -hmm. um, what fun. about this thing that you have right here in front of you? You wrote it for? I wrote it for a contest, American Heritage, which speaks of the DAR and what it means to me. Um, it just talks about some of the aspects of DAR, primarily hospitality, because I thought um, the DAR has been around since 1889, and that's a long time. And uh, even here in Oregon, our society has been in existence since 1896. So um, I think of the DAR as being involved in a lot of different things. Primarily, the love for me is education and then uh, veterans. We do a lot of work with the veterans. In our particular group, we've just, uh, it's kind of neat to be at the start of a chapter oh. and we're deciding what matters to us. We want to impact Grants Pass and our surrounding area. And but you've chosen a name that is so much bigger than local, I mean, it's the Applegate chapter, But right? Applegate ran through here, and so for us, we came up with about eight different names, and we all agreed that the Applegate Trail was the best for us. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel a little bit of extra pride when you just <laughs> say that? <laughs> yes. um, my sister is also a new mem member in this group, and yeah, we probably lobbied a little bit for the name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't hard, though. <laughs> I, I think it's wonderful. Just give us a sample of what you've written. Will everyone write something like this or? I think if they're inclined to, mm. they can. There's, there's a little bit of anything and everything for anyone. Oh. So every part, mm -hmm. member that um, wants to take a part in things, uh, you know, once they've proven their ancestry, they'd find a niche. Oh, well, guess what I am. I'm the historian. Oh. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Doesn't that fit? <laughs> The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution has for over 100 years promoted historic preservation, education, and patriotism while sharing hospitality in action. Daughters' generous actions permeate the society. Helpful and keen projects bring relief and hope while others expand dreams of aspiring youth. If you skip down a little bit more, another one is, it is with the spirit of hospitality and love that the daughters continue sponsoring annual American history essay contests. And they reward young students for their efforts and institute junior American citizen clubs to provide citizenship training and fun contests for children. And every year it's a different topic. This last year it was on the Continental Railroad Oh. And one young lady from my school, I teach at New Hope Christian School, uh, she wrote as if she was an American Indian. And her father uh, helped with, uh, sign a treaty up to allow the Americans to just go through their part of the land. But the imagination that it allows the youth to incorporate, 
you know, in their thinking, in their writing, and of course it's developing and, and improving the writing skills. So I think it's fun to... And that's a project that I want to be involved in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you'll have mentoring and you'll have judging and, and, and just the, oh, the whole idea of encouraging people to look, the young people to look into history and to write on it and do the research that's needed for it and then the creativity like you said it's not just factual it's you take a fact and expand on it and that's something that's, I think it's totally awesome. Didn't she get receive a a uh, savings bond for that? We gave her $50 cash uh -huh. oh, and uh -huh. this is a seventh grader and she was just so excited. Mm -hmm. And then she subsequently uh, wrote a, another essay that the uh, Grand Spass Courier offered and she won the contest and won another $50. So she's a very talented young lady and it's exciting to watch her grow. Where did you learn your writing skills? I mean, I well, I was a, a teacher, so that probably is part of it, and I think it may be a part of the Applegate genes. <laughs> <laughs> because Jesse was a wonderful writer. Uh, every, anyone who's ever read any of his letters, and there are, hun well, maybe not hundreds, but certainly o over a hundred of them that have been saved in various libraries and stuff, because people valued his writing ability. Uh, well, what kind of detail might he have incorporated in one of those letters that you remember? Well, uh, often he, spot, he, a lot of them addressed some political issue of one kind or another. He was uh, very involved in all that kind. One in particular, at the end of the, Revo at the Civil War, um, he was asked by the um, President, actually, of the United States to write some essays on uh, Reconstruction and how it should be uh, brought about. He very much believed that the free slaves should be given the right to vote, um, should be incorporated within our society as much as possible. Um, he, in Oregon, very early on, uh, wrote about the idea that we should be buying the land from the Indians. Not, I agree not taking it, but buying it. He was, that was shot down. <laughs> Most other people didn't feel that sure, way. Sure, why pay when you can take, grab, huh? Mm -hmm. um, he was instrumental in writing uh, Oregon's um, 1845 uh, Constitution as a territory. Um, in fact, he pretty much wrote it single-handedly. Well, I noticed shiny, shiny pin on your shoulder. That, don't you just okay. tell me what that's all about. Okay, it's a little wagon, and it represents the fact that we, uh, it's our symbol for the Applegate Trail DAR. It's, we chose a wagon because of, you know, Applegate, Applegate Trail. It's the Applegate Trail. Uh, so it's just kind of our special little pin to mark our particular DAR group. Mm -hmm. Now, why did you join? Why were you so excited about being a charter member? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Your charter members? Um, I just had, have always been interested in history. And for me to be able to document back that far and beyond mm -hmm. something that's tangible. I mean, when you actually see the, the paperwork in hand, that we had to uh, acquire birth certificates, death certificates, and um, service records, all of that. To it prove just that gives you, you a link. Mm -hmm. yeah. To prove that, you, uh -huh. that you're generation. not one of those newcomers like right. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. um, and it was just something I wanted to do for my family, mainly. Our granddaughter could be a DAR, but as I was, you know, we know that the Fultz boys fought but we don't know either Fultz boy's name. We don't know a lot of things about, we know kind of where they came from. This well, do is, you know their children? Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> well, because I think you, my, you, my, you could start at the big, where you yeah. are now and just gradually work your way work back. back. Mm -hmm. But my grand, my mother-in-law probably had a lot of that information and she did write her memoirs. So maybe if we dig through there, we can find out. She took You'll a class in high school. Uh, you know, for seniors um, to, to learn to write. Mm -hmm. She was a school marm, but hadn't taught much. You know, that was, once she got married, they didn't want. Right. <laughs> well, DAR has an amazing database mm -hmm. 
that uh, is available. Brag a little more members. about this organization. It goes back to when? It goes back to 1889. Um, Tell her about the building. Oh, oh yes. the building yes. dates back to the early 19th hundred century or the, the late 19th century but it's the only block and the very first block I should say that was owned totally by women in, in what? Washington DC in Washington DC right near the Capitol mm -hmm. and it's right next to the American Red Cross National Building right across the street and you've been there I've not she has I've been there many times because I lived on the uh, in Maryland and I belonged to the the district DAR for 10 years. In fact, I was a state officer. Okay, so so you know about DAR up and down the coast here. There's organizations mm -hmm. in, say, Portland, Eugene, Salem. We have 35 chapters in um, Oregon. And California and Washington have their own chapters. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Overall, there are probably in excess of a thousand. So if you're interested in what you're hearing today, how do they get in touch with you? Well, they can either call me, um, Diana, at... Um, They'll put your number up there. Yes, 541-479-0422, or they can email me. But what about internationally? People internationally, we have, we have chapters internationally. We so, have them in France, we have them in Germany, we have them in Mexico. And to get to your national hotline, let's say, is what? I'm not sure what the national hotline is, okay. but they can go online and simply That's put in uh, www.dar.org. Folks, you heard it here. If you're <laughs> interested, if your family goes back way before you were there to welcome us when we came off the boat, you now know how to find out. Thank you to each one of you for being my guests, and as your book develops, please keep us informed. I will do that. Let's take a better look at that pin. That is cute. Oh. Thank you so much for being my guest. And thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll do asking questions about your family also because it's fun for you and Grandma to connect. I'm Bernie Martin Beck saying bye for this week.